On today's show, the guys welcome back Greg Conley, instructional technology coach for Buffalo Public Schools. There's an East update, information on judging for the Conrad Challenge, banter between the guys, and more here up next on EduTech Guy. Yeah. You're listening to the EduTech Guys, edutechguys.com. Hello and welcome to this episode of EduTech Guys Radio. I'm David Henderson. Hey, I'm Jeff Madlock. Yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in and uh, spending part of your day with us. With us. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I had a path I was going down and I, I fell off the bike. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. But you know what you can do? You can go out to Google, type in EduTech Guys, and guess what? We're going to pop up on your screen whether that's your phone or your laptop or even your home entertainment unit, which could be Apple, Roku. Where am I going with this? Anyway, <laughs> if you would, go out to the web, www.edutech, guys, and find us. Take a look at our website. Drop down to the bottom of the page. You'll find a little contact form there if you'd like to. You'll also be probably catch a little nice pop-up there that'll ask you to join our, our mailing list. So uh, be kind and rewind Okay, that was wrong, <laughs> wow, 80s. wrong generation altogether. But now, give us a... So anyway, give us a shout out. Tell us what you think of the show and what you'd like to see and what you'd like to not see. But let us know what you think of the show and we'll gladly respond. Yeah, so we just, uh, as we're recording this, we just got back from Colorado Springs. We were at the uh, AESA, that's the Association for Education Service Agencies uh, National Annual Conference, and uh, had a great time. Uh, we talked to about 30 folks, and uh, you can find those conversations at conference.edutechguys.com. Dot com. Com. But I mean, lots of really cool conversations about all kinds of different topics. Oh, yeah. From uh, some of the vendors there to uh, some of the, the service sponsors and yeah. uh, some of the attendees, uh, the CEO herself. And, yes. Uh, yeah. Really great conference. Uh, wonderful place. Uh, I mean, we had a great time. Yeah. We were at the uh, Broadmoor, uh, the Broadmoor Resort mm -hmm. uh, there in Colorado Springs, right I mean, literally right at the foothills of giant mountain behind us and uh, went up to uh, Seven Falls, which is this really cool waterfall thing that was all lit up for Christmas. Yeah, had a good time. Had a really good time. Hey, listen, we have a great show for you today, and I think you're going to really enjoy Greg Conley and what we have to talk with him about. Uh, but before that, let's take a little break, and you can find out how to be a judge for the Conrad Challenge. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> You could be a judge for the Conrad Challenge. Read the blueprints of the future. The Conrad Challenge is an excellent opportunity for industry, government, research, and academia to help support the youth of today and take an active role in shaping our future workforce. Each year, we seek out individuals willing to serve as judges during the business plan round of the competition, as well as on-site judges during the Conrad Innovation Summit. Get more information at conradchallenge.org slash judges. Hey, welcome back to the Edge of Tech, guys. We're really excited. Uh, we've got a guest, a former guest on. We haven't had him on over two years we are talking about. Yeah, so i tell you what, we're going to let Greg tell us. Uh, I'm going to say his name naturally. I'm going to let him <laughs> tell us who he is, uh, what he does, and where he's from, and all that kind of good stuff. So let's take it away. Well, hey, everyone. I'm Greg Conley. I'm an instructional technology coach in the Buffalo Public Schools. And I guess with my gig... What I do most of the time uh, is co-plan, co-teach, reflect with teachers day in and day out. Um, I do much more of the instructional stuff because obviously my position, I guess, varies across the country, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So we haven't talked to you in over two years, and the last time we were talking about, you know, the different, you know, here in, in, in where we're at, L.A., in L.A., lower Arkansas, you know, we have ESL and ELL to us is like one language you know, maybe a few more. Where you're at, we're talking multiple languages. And let's talk about what's changed. Two years, a lot of tech has changed. A lot of what you do has changed. So kind of bring us up to speed on, on what's new with you and what's new with uh, in the world of what you do. Yeah, so in the Buffalo Public Schools, we have a ton of different languages. And I know last time in our previous podcast, we talked about the variety of those languages. And frequently, we have a lot of refugee groups who've come to move to Buffalo and 
uh, to start a new life. And in doing so, they bring with them their languages and they bring those languages to school and we have to teach them English as well. So um, we have a lot of div linguistic diversity in our district uh, where our top languages are languages like Koran and Burmese from Burma. Uh, we have Somali, we have Arabic, Nepali, um, and uh, um, and Spanish, of course. And most of our Spanish speakers come from Puerto Rico in particular, um, whereas in other areas, they might come from other areas of Latin America. Um, ours mostly come from Puerto Rico. So we have, a, I think, a unique diversity in our district, and um, it's been really fun working there. And I was a former ESL teacher. Now I'm an instructional technology coach in my district, supporting ELLs, mostly working in schools with ELL since. So let's talk about that. It's and, and, and I made it sound like it's all about language, but it's not about them learning English. It's about us teaching them, period. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the instructional technology you're putting in class to help these students learn, not just English, but learn algebra and science and all the good stuff that's going on. Right. And so the last time we talked, we talked a lot about support structures. And I, and I was making a lot of things for teachers to help provide that home language support. And, um, you know, and, and that's evolved in ways. Now we have things where I might have previously used a lot of QR codes to help convey information. This year, I'm in a school with laptops, and, you know, we're shifting a lot of things to OneNote. And so I live in a world where I'm going to build, uh, I'm going to help build background through OneNote in a lot of ways. So using a tool like that, which is, a, I guess I would call a big mamma jamma, that you got to be able to stuff a lot of different kinds of content inside uh, in order to help convey information. And you can organize a lot of different things. I think of like OneNote as a big table instead of just a, an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So it gives me a lot of things to embed video, to provide links to Wikipedia in different languages, um, and also just other resources that students can review on their own and not necessarily in class when they might be mixed with the general education population as well as ELLs in the classroom. So kind of that... Uh, not necessarily a completely flipped classroom, but uh, partially flipped slash uh, providing those external resources for the students. And along those lines, and, and along the lines of uh, putting the content out there for the students, um, how, how have the teachers been receptive to kind of that shift into, you know, putting these different resources into OneNote? Uh, well, OneNote's been a transition into itself. I mean, if you're using iPads, you might still uh, enjoy using something like Notability, for instance, which is another great tool that are on iPads. Uh, and if you're using laptops, you might use OneNote. It just depends. Maybe, you know, the resources that you find online are in Google Docs, and it's not as fun using it in OneNote. Those things happen. So for everyone, it's, it's different uh, depending on content, um, uh, depending on the content area. I think the more important thing is, Rather than me making all the resources all the time, which I'm happy to support teachers with at the very beginning, you know, the end goal is for them to take ownership of it. So mm -hmm. it's a bit about creating resources that they're hooked into, that they like, that they think are effective, um, and getting them to take ownership of different components of activities or the, and then eventually the entire activity. So that's been a bit more of my work in the past two years is not only implementing and designing and building resources, but having teachers take ownership of that technology. So it's not always just a library of things that they can steal from, but something that they know how to do themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And so do you have, uh, I'm hoping this is a semi-loaded question, but do you have some teachers who they are actually like, I don't know if ahead is the right word, but, but, but let's just say that there are a few steps ahead of you in a particular, you know, in a particular, um, I don't know, whatever it is, a program they like to use or, or, or a, a series of programs, or if they've got some kind of a, uh, if they're doing some kind of project and they've got an idea how it's supposed to, what, what they kind of want to do with it. So they're coming to you saying, Hey, I got A, B, C, and D. And you're like, well, I've heard of A. <laughs> you know? So, uh, so I, I guess where I'm going to call that is, you know, are they, are, are, are some of your teachers actually helping you learn your job? Um, well, just so I kind of understand it correctly, are you asking like, have, have they been able to throw instruction back on me to help me? Or are you saying, are you saying how have they taken ownership of that technology? Uh, more, more along the first lines where, where they've got some things that they're doing. And so you're having to learn or they're helping you learn some resources, some particular program app, whatever it is to help them w reach those goals and, and to work with that content that maybe you hadn't been aware of before, basically, you know, kind of expanding your own horizons through what your teachers are already doing. 
Well, for me, it's a lot of, well, I guess uh, in my position, I've been shifted into schools that get new teachers every year who have not yet been in a one-to-one environment. Oh, cool. Next year, that won't be the case. Yeah. So I've been doing a lot of that front-loading and showing new tools. Um, but, you know, I have a lot of teachers who, you know, they teach different content areas. I'm learning their content areas to help facilitate and model those activities and lessons. So I'm learning all the time in terms sure. of uh, my, my knowledge in science and math and other things that I'm not certified in. Uh, so it's helping me considerably uh, learn a lot more about their content that I can then transfer to other teachers and other schools. Um, but, you know, I let them do a lot of the talking. And so something that I've done this year is as teachers have taken ownership of these different activities, uh, I've spun it out with doing videos of them explaining and um, explaining the tool that they've begun to use and the activity so that they are the person who introduces it to the rest of the faculty, not Greg standing in front of them in a common planning yeah. meeting. I just think it's better for them to be the hook rather than me. So um, that's what I've been doing a little bit this year. So in terms of them, in terms of teachers being able to create their own professional learning community, and I guess I'm helping to do that through video and helping not just them build knowledge with me, but with the rest of the faculty too. Sure. Absolutely. So this year, so let's use this year for, uh, for an instance. So this year, what's the big wow? What's the big one that everyone's taken hold of and loves and you love? And, you know, let's, I know one note is a big one, but what's the other piece that's really caught on and then you see making huge uh, jumps forward, leaps forward in education for you guys? Well, I can say even in the past two years, I think the one thing, and I think I even talked about it previously with you guys, is, is video. <laughs> and especially for English language learners, being able to create those uh, scripts and being able to read for fluency and be able to add their own creativity in it, it means a lot uh, for these students who are trying to gain their own voice in a new language. And in schools with, in our district, we have iPads and we also have laptops. It depends on grade level. Um, so uh, pre-K to two have center-based iPads, grades three through six have one-to-one iPads, Grade 7 to 12 have laptops. So different video solutions for different devices. And um, with, with us, you know, I've watched a lot of growth happen with kids using iMovie. And between iPads and laptops, I've seen a lot of growth happen with kids using Adobe Spark Video, mm. which has been a huge change for kids gaining voice. I was just with a teacher this week who was doing a really great project um, with Shakespeare, and they were talking about the tragic hero, and they were being able to, hey, I can design this. I can change the layout. I can add my own music. What kind of music goes really well with this? <laughs> they were thinking about these things. Yeah. And they were supposed, and it's really, the structure is the same as an essay. So yeah. they were writing an essay, and it was more fun for them, and they could use their voice if they wanted to. They could uh, add in their own personal details to make it something more than just writing on a piece of paper. So I think that has been the the dramatic change, you know, the extra things that you put in it, like using green screens or things like that and other video production, you know, I think those are wow factors as well and hold their own place. But, you know, the, the cognitive stuff in the background, being able to act, being able to read for fluency, those things are, I think they're, are what makes a student learn and create that information to share with others. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and then you also get those skills that, um, you know, even, even people who have, uh, you know, stood in front of the class uh, you know, for years, whether it's whether it's teachers or whether it's students who have kind of grown up through a system where they've got to present to other students, you know, uh, there's something about when that, you know, one eyed monster comes on, that camera comes on and people freak out and freeze. Well, by having them use video, they get, of course, I realize, you know, a lot of kids today, it's, you know, second nature. They got, you know, they might as well have a video camera attached to their palm. But, you know, <laughs> but by the same token, you know, it's so easy or I, I would venture that it's it's much easier anyway, more accessible for those students to have that experience of talking to that faceless camera and presenting their ideas coherently and uh, you know as and as you said fluently and and not get that kind of you know camera fright you know they, they they're able to you know basically just get over that because that's part of their video project. You're you're absolutely right. I I think. Um, one of the great principles, one of the great things about video editing that I think is the same great thing about, you know, gamification is that you get unlimited tries. Mm -hmm. You can try and fail and try and fail. And the fails are positive fails because you're learning every time. So mm -hmm. with, with video, when you're recording your voice, you can just do it again. It's okay. And the final product is what matters the most. And I think these kids understand that and that's encouraging them to try. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Rather than not try it all. Awesome. So a little technical yeah. side of this for our listeners. Um, what do you guys use to host it? Are you using Google, YouTube? Is that what you're using to host most of these? Or are you just dropping those videos and like share folders and sharing them out that way on OneNote? Uh, what, how are you guys doing that? Well, I think it also matters about the audience. So for students in some classes, they might we use Schoology as our learning management system. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, so they have an assignment and the kids will submit that video as an assignment. That okay. is one way that teachers do it. But I've seen a lot more examples of, um, I've worked with teachers who do gallery walks with QR codes. So kids will walk around the room and scan the QR code and it will open up their video and they will watch the video and reflect. And I think what's great about the QR code gallery walk um, is that you can you don't know whose product, whose project you're about to look at. You don't know who's there necessarily. And so I think when I've done gallery walks, even as an ESL teacher, I would always get frustrated because I always felt like kids were, you know, picking their friends and not actually walking around the room. Sure. And that would always like aggravate me. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so what's great about the QR codes is they don't know. And so they just watch the video anyway and they reflect. So it's great in terms of building that class community and that mm-hmm. they're actually going around and listening to everybody's video. Um, so that's one big thing that I think helps develop that audience. If, you know, if you're not doing project-based learning and you're not presenting to like the community on whatever video project you're doing, I think these gallery walks are a quick slam dunk in terms of being able to get kids to participate in other students' projects and take it seriously and reflect. Um, but when you submit it as an assignment in Schoology, like any other learning management system, it's just going to the teacher and it's not necessarily being shown to everyone. Mm-hmm. And, and what's also great about QR codes finally is that they're all doing it at the same time at their own pace. Whereas if you're doing it where the kids are the audience and you're just clicking down the line and playing each video, you know, the students might not really be paying attention and might not be taking it as seriously and not appreciating those products that they took all that time to make. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Hey, so uh, before we let you go, uh, tell us about something else that you've been uh, doing here lately. Well, just recently I presented at NiceGate with two other coaches in, from the Buffalo Public Schools. And NiceGate is the ISTE affiliate uh, in, for New York, and uh, it takes place in Rochester. Um, so that means I drove there cool. every day. <laughs> <Wow>. and, uh, <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, and uh, I got to present twice. One time it was about um, – the topic was tech tools for ELLs. Mm-hmm. And so I covered a lot of different things regarding sheltered instruction and the SIOP model, which is all about teaching English language learners and some of the tools that we use every day that might line up to those components. Oh, cool. So that's what I presented there. And, and then uh, on Tuesday, I uh, presented with uh, another coach from the district, Heather Giacomo, and um, she was much better than me, I think. She was I mean, I was having an off day, but uh, we presented on the coaching cycle and we talked about our experience uh, with coaching in the Buffalo Public Schools and the amount of devices we've gotten in a short amount of time and the transformation that's happened along the way. And uh, we talked a little bit about uh, how do you start a program like this? How did you get your one-to-one program up and running? What were the things that we needed to do as coaches to improve our own capacity to do our own job? Oh, wow. And how could we spin off the good things happening to other schools and to other classrooms. So we covered a lot of things. Um, we made some really great connections. And after all the presentations were said and done, I also played around with the new Microsoft HoloLens. Got some, uh, I went to the top of a mountain in Peru. Uh, oh, it was a great cool. time. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> That's really <man>. awesome. <laughs> that yeah, so I've been cool. real impressed with that. So um, uh, so if you did that, so are you presenting at ISTE? Are you going to try to present that at, maybe at the big national conference here pretty soon? Because that sounds like a one that everyone would love to, to attend. You should. Yes, absolutely. We want to present there and we may or may not have applied. Um, <laughs> uh, hopefully... I feel like it's like some sort of ISTE rule where you can't talk about that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's it's in it's in the Wait. works, right? Well, it's in the you, works. You, you've applied, yeah, and, and we shall see, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We'll wait for the big announcement. So. Right. I'll pay for the advertising. Right. <laughs> so, so hopefully what I'm saying is hopefully we'll not just see you in Philadelphia. We'll actually come in and watch you do your thing in Philadelphia. So potentially. That's, that's what, potentially. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be awesome. really that'd awesome. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be fun. So um, if folks want to get any information about this, did you guys put anything online about this? Did you re- turn out a white paper or any presentations or anything like that? We do have the presentations, but I think it's all through the conference material. I don't know if sure. you can get access to it without it. attending the conference, unfortunately. Sure. But, you know, if you do contact me through Twitter or something like that, I, I'd be happy to share things out with you. Awesome. So if our folks want to reach out to you, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Because 
Greg has a lot more to share. I promise you. Just email him or follow him or follow him on Twitter. Tell us, give us all the the, the contact information there. Yeah, so I am out there on Twitter. I'm at Greg's a teacher. Keep it simple. Uh, and I'm also on YouTube as well. And their channels, you can just search for Greg Conley ESL. And I like to make videos for English language learners. Uh, I like to make videos about technology. And I usually make the directions as simple enough for an English language learner to understand it. So even if you're not one, you might still benefit from it. And, um, and I also make videos pertaining to social studies as well. Cool. So those are like three little areas that I focus on. And yeah. Awesome, man. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to share that out and make sure that folks uh, give you guys a, give you a look up so they know what's going down. Um, uh, thanks for coming on the show again. We got to make it not so long this next time. Yeah. We, we don't need to, we don't need to stay apart. <laughs> Let's not as, wait two years. As far. <laughs> is, is this like Saturday Night Live though? Don't I get like the jacket at some point? Hey, well, you know, that's right, yeah. you know what? We, you're actually the same one. Club location? Yeah, we got to send you a t-shirt. We, we got to send you a we t-shirt. A t-shirt so, you know, yeah. I, I got to get permission from Richard yeah, Marks. Frank and send me an extra small. Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. yeah, yeah. I, I got to get permission from uh, Richard Marks so we can have repeat offender on. Yeah. That's, that's way old. Oh, sorry. Yeah, old, sorry. old reference. Old sorry. reference. Hey, man, thanks <laughs> anyway. for coming on the show, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Hey, thanks for having me. Hello. I am Jessica Dunham with your East Update. East Partner Appreciation Night, a time for students and facilitators to come together to celebrate their community partners and to thank them for their time, talents, and most importantly, their unwavering support. East students at Helstern Middle School tell us about their experience with putting together an East Partner Appreciation event in Northwest Arkansas. Hello, my name is Avery Anderson. I'm Clara Anderson. I'm Mason Flint. I'm Andrew Tankersley. And I'm Meg Baker. We are Helstern Middle School students, and this is how to plan a great event. So one of the things I found challenging was um, even finding a place. I mean, it's easy to host it at your school but we were looking for somebody where extra special and we ended up choosing the Apollo. But the only problem about it was we spent our whole budget on that. And so afterwards it was really hard to actually find donations for the event. And, but luckily we, luckily we had a bunch of great connections and we could pull it off. Another thing is you need to have a meal for everyone. So if people are like vegetarians, you have to have a meal for them because they won't eat normal food, normal food. So you need meals for everyone. So if you could get food from places that you have connections with, they're more willing to do that and it would be really helps you out a lot. And we had to re-email some of the places and when it got um, to like the deadline where we needed food, um, we just called them and that really helps to just like, just say, hey, we like some donations and get straight to the point. Yeah, and even some of our friends, like family members donated money so we could do this. Mm -hmm. And one big thing I think all of us can say is that teamwork is definitely the key and just communicating with your team for sure. Communication with your teacher, Ms. Pena, um, it's definitely big. And you need to get everything out, laid in front of you, kind of. So, like, what I mean by that is, like, we really, there was a few things that were we should have got done earlier, but were done last minute the day of. Yeah. And things just like making, agen- the little things like making agendas and posters and just little decorations for the actual event, which was hard. I would say always have a backup plan. Things aren't going to go as you want. So we first wanted to do it here, and then they gave us something way out of budget to pay for the whole thing. But we kept talking, and they're like, yeah, we'll limit down 100, I mean 1,000, and we ended up getting it. So just always be able to work with them. Another thing is you always need to remember the decorations because you can't have a good party or a good event without, the good de- without decorations. Oh, yeah. When you're speaking, you should probably introduce yourself, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had um, some presidents of each group, and we kind of selected someone who's been at East for a long time, and they, we decided they speak. After all their hard work, they wanted to make sure they took time to thank a few people. Just our East facilitator really helped a lot, yeah. and just putting like the pressure on us to do things, she wasn't coming up with all the ideas herself. It was kind of like we'd ask her, 
like I personally, like, what should be right in the script? How should I say this? She just be silent and let me think about it, and I came up with the answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to thank the Apollo. They really worked with us really well, and I'm really surprised they gave us this, but it was really nice. Yeah, they were very nice to us. Okay. Yeah, and I also thank the East people, like the facilitators and the executives and the runners of East, that we, that they chose us to even do this awesome. And to take their time to actually mm -hmm. focus on this. So. Miss Peggy did a lot of work with that, so, yeah. so did we, of course, but um, she just emailed them and then we FaceTimed, or we... Yeah. Um, it was like we... Video chatted. Yeah, video, video chatted, chatted a, a meeting with some of the East executives who helped us out with that. Mm -hmm. But most of it was the other schools getting their community partners in, because we told everybody bring a community partner. The East experience would not be what it is without the willingness of the community partners to work collaboratively with the students to complete their projects. This event provided an opportunity for the Hellstern and other East students to invite their VIPs, very important partners. There you have it, folks. Hopefully these tips prepared you for your next event. Thank you, Hellstern. If you're interested in learning more about our East students, follow us on social media at The East Initiative or visit our website at eastinitiative.org. Our music today is an anonymous submission known as Happier. Thanks for listening. I'm Jessica Dunham with your East Update. Hey, thank you so much to the East Initiative, that's eastinitiative.org, for providing the uh, weekly East update that we get here on the EduTech Guys radio show. It's so cool to hear about what's going on with the program itself and with the schools that participate in the uh, East Initiative. Yeah, and once we get back from Christmas, we'll be really ramping up for the East Conference, which will happen in the spring. So we'll be giving more information about that, and you can find out about the schools you might be interested in, and maybe taking your school into East and at the East Conference. Yeah, and before all that happens, right after Christmas break, we will be at FETC in Orlando uh, in January. Hey, and then we'll be in ISA, the Illinois Computer Educators Conference, in February. Yeah, and then April, we've got the Conrad Challenge. That'll bring us back to Florida, but that, but at that point, we'll be at the uh, Kennedy Space Center. Give me a rocket, baby. Rocket, rocket man. man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> little harmony on the rocket man. A little bit. Uh, we're gonna, That's where they have the security come and escort us off the premises. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll end up more like Major Tom than Rocket <laughs> Man, lost in space somewhere. <laughs> hey, listen, it's been a great show. It, it has, despite the ending. Despite the ending. Hey, I'm Jeff Madlock. I'm David Henderson. We'll talk to you later. You've been listening to the EduTech Guys, edutechguys.com.